What's up guys, it's and welcome back to Pro Sigma.2022 for episode number 71 of the Calendar Garmin career mode. Today's episode marks the end of the final Grand Tour of the season, the Mittal Europa Rundfahrt, and we'll also head to the United States of America for both Classic, the East and the West Coast one, in preparation for the World Championships, which will wrap up season 5 in the next episode. Plus 5 all around for the team as we have a um, heli stage between Frankfurt and Koblenz. If you've missed the uh, previous episode, then I would recommend checking them out so that you would understand the general classification that is now on screen with Miguel Angel Lopez leading um, 34 seconds on Maxim van Gels, a minute 5 on Henrik Maas, 3.36 on uh, Brandon McNulty. There was uh, only two mountain stages in this Grand Tour. Both have already been played out and sadly the first one really took its toll on uh, the American champion, the former American champion, now wearing the uh, Polka jersey. We won't be in the breakaway today because I don't think there's any chance of Brandon going there. Uh, we'll send some uh, some other riders, the likes of Rangel Costa, the likes of Sheffield, the likes of Fletcher, trying to uh, seize up a chance at getting the stage because we haven't had many of those in this Grand Tour. And if I don't get the GC, at least I want some stages and maybe, maybe some jerseys. And it appears we have our breakaway. Nine riders ahead. Um, Ethan Eitza, Attila Valta, Marceluzzi for Credit Gold, and then Jackson Fletcher, Magnus Sheffield, Mikael Leonard, Rafael Parizella, Stefan Bessega, and Vinicius Rangel Costa. The peloton sits four minutes behind, led by Tosh van der Sander of uh, uh, Timo Bobanke. We've got some riders in the chase with Gorak, Michal Ikulus, Johannes Staunemetzet, and Rasmus Stella. I'm going to try something. Uh, we've got one more second cat coming up, the uh, Kemenau, 3.5k, average of 8%. I'm gonna try and attack with Brian McNulty. If I can be at the front here, I'm kind of getting blocked by uh, Anton Palza. Okay, well, my tactic is now gone because I wanted to attack in the difficult portion, which was, well, the very beginning of it, and I got blocked. I'll still try and, uh, and accelerate Derek G with a strong rhythm. Brandon's gonna attack if he can find a fucking way through. Good. All right, attack by Brandon. Then I'm gonna slow down here, wait for Brandon, and try to pace with the riders in the break now. We have about 40 seconds on the peloton led by Miguel Rolves. I can tell you the rhythm is intense. The rhythm is intense. Only eight riders have uh, managed to uh, try to stay afloat, actually. They're struggling. Michel Lenard is going to probably get dropped in, uh, um, well, very shortly, should I say. Rafael Parizella got dropped. Jackson Fletcher got dropped. But so far, so good. Miguel Rolves seems to be struggling. We may have pulled a great masterclass here. This, this could be the start of something great until I inevitably fuck up by forgetting to pace at the summit of a climb, and I get dropped for not looking. It's Lopez versus us. So far the gap is staying afloat, still one minute with 10k to go. We've crossed every single difficulty of the stage. And now I guess it's time to head into Koblenz. We'll sprint with Magnus Sheffield already. Uh, we'll go 99 as well with Angel Costa. Now, do I go Bissega or do I go McNulty for the win? I'll go Brandon for the win, just for, for the fact that this man can get the bonus seconds. I know for the points jersey, it's better to go Besega. I'll go P2 with Besega. But it seems that we may get one minute, minute 30 today on the uh, main favorites, which is somewhat unexpected, and that's absolutely great. Enric Mas has been dropped. Where is Enric Mas? Oh, he's far behind. Oh, Enric Mas is far behind. Enric Mas has, has completely fucked up here. Yeah. We're going to jump to P3, comes the end of the stage. Bissega's going to start his effort, McNulty's going to take his wheel, Sheffield's going to launch, everyone's going to launch. We're going to go for McNulty, as I said. Bissega's going to crack on the line. Oh, the gap has gone up increasingly. I've, I've, I've missed... Oh, I've won with Bissega. That's fine. Uh, the gap has gone up because Lopez is out of energy. 1.3k, one kilometer left. How many seconds am I going to get back on the favorites? It may be upwards of two minutes, and it is going to be two minutes. Two minutes and seven seconds, to be exact, for McNulty. The red jersey is back on. I'm disappointed that uh, Brandon only has a minus three today in a stage uh, that could have suited him the same way that the stage suited the team yesterday. If we take a look at the GC, we now set 123 down on Miguel Lopez, um, but the rest of the race really isn't difficult because this is not going to create any gaps this isn't i don't think this is and this is definitely not so this is technically the final stage where gaps can be made and i'm afraid that there is not enough terrain to gain upwards of one minute on miguel lopez today we're going to try the exact same tactic <laughs> parizella attacks mcnulty follows exactly when campanato was starting to struggle as well 
All right, I'm gonna have these guys slowing down. Rafael's gonna give everything he's got. Actually, McNulty's gonna immediately follow in counter attack, should I say. How's the peloton looking like? Van der Sander is the one trying to uh, to chase. If Mr. Brandon can try and bridge to the group ahead, despite the minus three, that would be quite quite the performance from uh, from the American. Matter of fact, I'm gonna drop a few of these dons to Brandon. Where's the peloton? Technically right there. Hold up, I need to uh, I need to pose this so I don't make a mistake here. I'm pretty sure the peloton's gonna catch me. But at least I've tried. Interestingly, um, I don't want to say that we have managed to get a gap, but we do have two minutes. Sheffield and Bissega are doing absolutely incredible. I'm just gonna increase the lights, perfect. Uh, yeah, Sheffield doing great, Bissega doing great, Paul Aperas just got dropped. Gap, two minutes on a group of 91 riders, where it must be said, uh, none of the real riders, or real leaders should I say, have decided to pace or, or do anything that could prove uh, to put my position in, my position, sorry, in jeopardy. Sheffield Bessega, 30 kilometers to go, McNulty is still here, Antonio Tiberi is also there. I saw that Vla uh, Vlasov nearly came back for the um, mountain jersey, but he's been dropped, so that's absolutely perfect for me. But Bessega Sheffield, once again, doing the Lord's work for Brandon McNulty. Pretty sure there's been some attacks. Uh, I'm not seeing the red jersey. I'm not seeing the red jersey of... Uh... Oh, Miguel Halopez is dead. Miguel Halopez is dead. Uh, I need to make sure that Brandon doesn't die. Uh, but Miguel Halopez has exploded. The group of the white jersey is gone. Who's that? Is that Rodriguez? Wait, hold up. Where's... Where's Van Gels? Van Gels is in this group. 147. 123. Brandon McNulty is virtually leading this Vuelta a España. I can't really pace a lot here because Brandon is nearly dead. Uh, and it's allowing some riders to come back. Vlasov. Uh, oh, Van Gels. Van Gels. His head is moving uh, left to right, front to back, and that's never a good thing. Tiberi looks good. Tiberi is probably going to defeat me today. But Brandon McNulty is going to move into the leader's, the leader's position of this Vuelta Espana. Sorry, of this Metal Europa Rundfert. And I did not see that coming. Vlasov and Soler just crashed in the final three kilometers. We're going to use the gels. Um, I'm going to guess that Sheffield is going to take it. Uh, I don't think Tiberi has the legs. I don't think, I mean, actually, I know for a fact that Brandon doesn't. I don't think Bessega will either. Tiberi, Sheffield, Bessega, Sheffield, Sheffield, Magnus Sheffield takes the stage in Vils. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Let's take a look at the new general classification. Uh, Brandon lost some time on Magnus Sheffield, but I'm pretty sure that Brian McNulty is now leading the Metal Europa Rundfeat. 120 on Van Gils, 328 on Miguel Lopez. He is in his fitness peak, or I think, no, I think he's out of his fatigue that he had early season. I think that may be one of the reasons as to why he's good. Um, what's the fitness of Miguel Lopez? Just, just so I can check. Can I not see that anymore? Can you not see the fitness of someone anymore? Okay, I guess I can't see his, uh, his uh, fitness. He used to be able to do so back in the days. But I'm very intrigued to, to see how he's, uh, how, he's, how he's managed to drop that much. He had the Vuelta before, like, the start of, the, of this race. The Grotto was his. I don't really know what to expect from this stage. Uh, plus one for Bessega, plus four for Michel Leonard, plus one for McNulty, the new red jersey of this race. Um, still kind of taken aback by uh, this. Red bike as well for uh, Brandon Cannondale. Coming in clutch with a bike that definitely wasn't prepared uh, before end, beforehand, sorry. We're gonna have some attacks. Um, what does that mean GC well, for like the classifications? I think the points is basically, I would say secure, but no, there's, there's a sprint stages coming up. Uh, mountain wise, I think we got it. Best rider, I still don't care. Best team, still don't care. It's still me, but I, I still don't know how. Um, I guess I'll go again in the breakaway. I mean, it's worked for the past two stages. Might as well work for this one. Sit rep, as uh, we near the halfway mark of the stage, a uh, breakaway of 16 riders, two minutes on the peloton. This time they're not letting the breakaway go. Uh, they've learned their lesson, even though now I'm the one that should be controlling the race and uh, not the other teams. So I'm confused. It's it's mainly Tudor pacing at the front with um, the, um, the odd Spotify or teamable rider coming through. Uh, but it's weird, it's weird. Um, we've got Leonard Fletcher, Sheffield Parisa, and Rangel Costa up front. 
I'm not really sure what I need to do here. Just defend the jersey, I guess. Um, in the break, we've got some good riders. The likes of Carapaz, the likes of Valta, the likes of Mikel Landa, Jay Vine, Lorenzo Fortunato. So this breakaway could potentially go the distance if they were to work together. We got dropped from the breakaway. Uh, I didn't go for a KOM and I got dropped. Which is exla exactly the scenario I had planned to lose La Vuelta and not to lose the breakaway. One minute for a group of seven. Valta, Fortunato, Kudus, Stein, Mitet, Yemana. Carapaz and Carlos Verona. Carlos Verona is the one that destroyed everyone today. Uh, so big ups him. No one is a threat for the specification, I think. Nope. Um, so we'll just let this group get caught by the peloton, which has been done now. And we're going to chase the breakaway down. And I'm not sure we're going to catch them. Uh, gap, still about, about a minute. Stein omitted fully on his own now. Uh, I'm pacing with Mr. Lenor. But uh, the winner of La Caritica Sebastian doesn't have the greatest of legs. I say that as he catches Attila Valta, 58 riders make that, make that 12 riders now in the league, make that just me. How has that happened again then? How, how have I dropped everyone? Ethan Ata is the one following. He's already learning ahead of his, uh, his move to, uh, to Canon del Garmin for next season. Even Ethan has exploded. Then again, it is Magnus Sheffield pacing, uh, but this is getting ridiculous. Simply ridiculous. Dawit Yemane, sorry, trying to stay in the wheel of uh, Vinicius Rangel Costa. Four kilometers to go. 30 seconds with the uh, peloton. We're going to have Brandon take the lead of said group. Magnus can go at the back here. He's probably going to drop Yemane by the same way. I'm very sorry, Dawit. And it's going to be a 1, 2, 3 minimum. Potentially 4, 5. How have we done this? How have we turned around? How has this Vuelta turned around? Because this was not meant to be. Not the way we had started things off. Definitely not the way we had started things off. But it's a win for the red jersey. Ahead of the green one. And that... Well, that's kind of cool. Luck has seemed to be in my favor in uh, this Vuelta so far. Or at least in today's installment. But I have the biggest challenge of all ahead of me. A mass sprint on a purely flat stage. Getting close to Rent now. 12 kilometers. We are pacing with Rafael Parizella. Derek G was in the breakaway. Um, sadly, he did not manage to uh, to make it very far. 10k to go. Rafael Parizella is going to go 99. Jackson Fletcher will take the relay, the uh, Aussie champion. We're going for Beshega. Obviously. We've got McNulty in his wheel. Obviously. We're going to come P14. Obviously. Right, well, let's move to the left-hand side of the road to show that if I do that, even the train gets blocked. There we go. Uh, that's, that's, we've had that's on me here. That's, that's, that's me being a bit of a, of a nutter. Not to say a dumbass. Leonard leads. I'm, I'm very well positioned as well. That's, that's not meant to happen. How do I do this now? There goes Magnus Sheffield. Leonard's gonna step aside. Sheffield, Sheffield, 2.6k. Sheffield, 2 kilometers. Rangel Costa, Rangel Costa launches with 1.5. Bessega in the wheel, Bessega in the wheel, Bessega in the wheel, there goes Stefan Bessega, we're gonna lose, but not by much. It's P2 today, it's a win for Matthew Walls, no it's a win for Jake Stewart, sorry, ahead of Stefan Bessega. We may be back, I don't know. If I can make this stage unscathed, then the Metal Europa Rundfeld, first and potentially last edition, will bring uh, a success, and we'll see an American winning it. But for now, we have 142 kilometers between Rennes and Bruxelles and many cobbles along the way. It seems like the cobble did not do anything and we are heading as a 92 men peloton into Bruxelles for the end of this Grand Tour. Actually, no, there's, a, there's a stage after that, but I'm pretty sure it's another sprint stage, uh, the, the usual procession around uh, whichever town we shall finish in. We'll use the gel once again to, uh, to sprint, maybe a chance for, uh, for Stefan Bessega to, to not do many things. Although I'm, uh, I'm, I'm bad-mouthing it, but he did get second. And I'm pretty sure he's won two stages so far. In uh, this episode, Magnus Sheffield is going to lead McNulty, he's going to lead Bessega. 2.2k, I'll immediately launch McNulty. Magnus is going to step aside, 1.4 kilometers. the train for Honevegan. I started, Dylan launches from very far away, but I'm pretty sure that's gonna pay off. Yep, it's a, it's a very convincing win for Honewegen, and it's, it's, it's P2 for me. Again, what's happening in this episode? 
Hello, we can fix it. But I got an I just want to check something. There's no cards. No, okay. I, the, I just wanted to check that wasn't the right difficulty. I wasn't playing on easy or whatever. This makes no sense. All right, one more stage in this, uh, in this world time, then we'll move on to America for the final two stages of the episode. Final stage of this uh, Mitteleuropa Rundfahrt. We're back in Germany. Potsdam, Berlin, 178 kilometers. Flat sprint. Nothing to play for, and we are somehow going to walk away with three jerseys, the red one included, when everything seemed out of the uh, question a couple of stages ago. Still not really sure as to how we pulled it off. Not going to complain. The final rider as a breakaway was co up that would be Torstein Red for um, Kubica V3. And it means that in the streets of Berlin for the final stage of this Mitteleuropa Rundfahrt, it is going to be a mass sprint. As expected, we are sitting on the left side of the road here, trying to navigate our way through uh, the uh, many, many uh, liquid gas riders. Rafael Parizella trying to uh, seize up a nice move and uh, maybe create himself some sort of space. We're going to get blocked, I think, by Hal Terada. No. Uh, he, game recognizes game. The uh, former rider of YouTube Pro Cycling obviously not blocking us. Because he is, after all, the GOAT. 5k to go, Michel Leonard is going to use his gel, Bessega will be obviously our sprinter, McNulty is in his wheel, kind of a uh, Bradley Wiggins leading out Cavendish, well this one is exactly the other way around, so let's not dwell on that. Magnus is going to take the lead of the peloton, solid 99 rhythm for uh, the American, and Rangel Costa starts his effort. Oh, I hadn't seen, uh, I hadn't seen Ronnevegan on the left. Ah, huh. I see. <laughs> so, Ronnevegan, his last two sprints are ridiculous. He doesn't care about us. Well done. Rasmus Stella claims P2 in a very weird sprint that sees Bessega finishing in P11. But that's enough for us to clinch uh, the green jersey. And the final podiums have arrived. Dylan Ronnevegan takes it for Onsa, the uh, Spanish outfit winning on what is technically the home Grand Tour. Um, Tilla Wolf Lapera and just starting to uh, wrap up the uh, top five in Berlin. Brandon McNulty wins his second Grand Tour, I think, after winning the Tour de France. He now needs to win the Giro and he'll have all three to his uh, Palmares. Van Riels and Miguel Lopez completes a podium with Eric Mas and Banjoli fourth and fifth and very weird top ten. But b big ups Brandon and also big ups him for winning the best corner classification. Um, Bargill was second, Parizella third. For a very long time, Parizella seemed to be the uh, winner of the uh, jersey, but Brandon just uh, arrived and took everything by storm, which is good. Also, Besega retains and wins the green jersey of this race ahead of Hanovigan and Jake Stewart comfortably, despite being quite close at the start of the episode, but this episode was just completely ridiculous for us. Best of all, Carlos Rodriguez, for Timo Bolbanki, and uh, Sienna Utebrooks and Magnus Sheffield. Finally, the best team is Candel Garmin. Alright, let's move on to uh, the American races and wrap up the episode. We've changed continents for the uh, East Coast Classic. Uh, is that correct? No, that's the, that technically is. Alright, that should be the West Coast Classic. We're in San Francisco. For this race, uh, it replaces the uh, Grand Prix de Quebec and you have uh, so the West Coast Classic, which actually is the East Coast Classic that replaces the Grand Prix de Montréal. I wanted some change because, I mean, let's be honest, they're not the most thrilling races and I figured uh, America could have some races. I don't think they had the Grand Tour this year. Actually, no, they did. They had the route of the Gold Rush. Right, forget the reasoning behind those races. I just wanted some change. Um, well, I mean, we're literally driving within uh, a mountain right now, as you can see. Uh, you're, you're, we're, we're, we're fucking body deep inside the road. Um, but it's so far so good. We did get dropped. Uh, Menkis, Jorgensen, Nordhagen and Mason Ray all lost a lot of terrain. But they came back. They came back, meaning that we have 64 kilometers to go. We have a 68-man peloton and Mauro Schmidt is still looking good. He is my pick for today's win, uh, but... I do have Matteo as a protected rider, just in case. Final 30 kilometers, uh, we went through terrain before, we're now going through buildings. 
And uh, I must say, this is a difficult race. It's a very, very difficult race. We are coming back on the breakaway of five here. Um, that just attacked with uh, the likes of Igor Arrieta, Santiago Umba, Asbjorn Harlan Johansson, Javier Romo, the uh, Spanish champion, and Hugo Jiquel. They are remarkably offensive. They keep attacking and attacking and attacking and attacking. Um, and so far, I'm struggling to come back. I must say, Matthew Jorgensen did lose contact with the peloton. I'll try to ensure his position in the peloton. Try to take hold of Mauro Schmidt and mostly try to recover because I need you in the coming portion of the stage. All right, I had to attack. I had to attack with Mauro. I figured. Had I not moved then, uh, I probably would have lost the um, the East Coast Classic. Mauro Schmidt chasing Jojo Garcia. We've got a literal Pinarello bike in my wheel. Uh, all right, we're going to come back on this group here. We've got two riders up front. That is Arieta and Santiago Umba. We're going to catch them. Mauro Schmidt in a group of 10 riders. And he's looking quite nice. And because of this, uh, this is San Francisco, there is a lot of elevation, a lot of um, terrain changes. Meaning that I can't really recover or just even not pay attention. The frame rate is going completely bonkers. I'm running 16 FPS right now. Uh, that is due to all of the uh, detail and scenery present in uh, in this stage. Group of eight, we've dropped uh, Arieta and uh, Jojan Garcia. Mauro running strong in this group. I'll follow the attack of Asbjorn Haaland Johansson. Javier Romo has, uh, has had to step to the side. Go to Bridges to uh, Egan Bernal, Mauro Schmidt, looking good so far, let's not break over this hill right here. Next up, Presidio in 2 kilometers. We've got some more attacks, this time it's Arieta attacking and uh, well I decided to follow David. Clearly David didn't want to bring me back, which is understandable. You don't really want to have a, a former world champion in your wheel. Nine riders fighting for the win. In San Francisco, the uh, city of the Golden Gate, about uh, to crown a first ever classic winner. I'm going to use the gel, increase the rhythm. There's going to be another attack here. Uh, let's try to take the wheel of, uh, of Johansson. Hoping it's not too late. Hoping I haven't decided to uh, make my move a second, second after I should have. I would have loved to take the wheel of, uh, of Santiago Umba. And I think we're done. I think we are finished. Schmidt is going to try and bridge to Egan Bernal, but I'm going to run out of yellow energy. And the win today is going to be for Igor Arrieta. It's a great job by Vox. They did everything with Bernal to set a move for their Spanish leader. Arrieta wins in San Francisco ahead of Alessandro Corvi. Egan Bernal, Mauro Schmidt comes home to take a respectable P6. Final race of this episode, and we are in, I believe, Baltimore for this race indeed. Um, couples. Many cobbles. Um, whilst the, the previous race was mostly hills, this one just cobbles. We've got Stefan Kung, we've got um, Luke Wood, we do have Matteo Jorgensen, got Mauro Schmidt, we've got a decent lineup. Will we win? No, because Matthew van der Poel and Will van Aert exist. Just on the 70 kilometers left, and Jack Hague's season has gone from bad to worse. Uh, I think it is third DNF of the season for the leader of Timo Banke. Uh, Tim Sorsky clearly needs to get a grip and tell his riders that uh, the way to win a stage is not by giving up. And on 15 kilometers, and we are bridging to a group ahead of Benny Guernway and Wout van Aert. These riders are getting lapped. I was waiting on, your, on uh, Jorgensen sorry, to uh, give me water. There he is. Okay. Can we come back on Benny? I don't know. But it's the champion of Eritrea alongside the European champion. That's quite the powerful duo, I must say. They keep attacking each other. And uh, that means that I can't really come back at them. But once they do indeed get together, they stop pacing. Nope, Benny decided to counterattack. For fuck's sake, Benny. 16 riders left in uh, the uh, main peloton. 30 seconds. One more cobble section. We're going to need to do something and we're going to need to do it quick. 30 seconds, we are on the final couple sector here in uh, Thames Street in the waterfront. Gemai has uh, followed the attack of uh, Wout van Aert once again. I'm giving everything I've got. I'm literally giving everything I've got. But so are these two. And, uh, well, they're just better than uh, than Luke Wood. And I've just realized that even had I managed to, to come back at them, I don't think I can win a sprint. 
against those two uh, those two guys. So we're kind of fucked here. Yeah? Although I say that, we're gonna come back at uh, Von Art and uh, Enderman Dem. 3k, 2k, 1.5k. Um, shit, fuck it, let's go. I've launched too late, but then again, I had no energy. I don't have a sprinter. And it's a win for Tigonis today in Baltimore ahead of Benny Gamay. No, actually, instead of Mats Pedersen and Stefan Kung. Yeah, we, you know what? We tried. We tried. This was fun. Overall, we win six stages of this Metal Europa Rundfahrt. Uh, Rundfahrt, sorry. To which uh, we had three jerseys. Uh, we also won Breton Classic and the uh, C Classics Hamburg in between. I must say, I'm quite happy and quite. Yeah, quite happy with the team. Um, it's a second Grand Tour for us this year. Maybe next year we can go for three Grand Tours out of three and potentially potentially even go for four out of four, actually, because there potentially will be a Grand Tour to start the season. That about wraps up today's episode. The next one will be the final one of the season, World Championships and Lombardia. Uh, oh, I forgot, this is a new Lombardia. We're in Greece, actually. This is gonna be fucking mental. Great. Uh, so yeah, World Champs in La Planche des Belles Filles, both the time trial and the road race. And then in Lombardia to wrap up the season, I'll do a very quick brief, or debrief, should I say, of the transfers. And we'll head into season 5, 6, 2022, 3, or 5, 6. Season 6, yep, yeah, you could definitely see the, the process of me thinking, and I'm probably wrong as well. Uh, but yeah. This has been a fun episode, I think. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. If you did, please do leave a like down below if you're new around here. Uh, if you want to see more of this content going forward as well, then do feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll catch you in the very, very near future. My name's Guillaume. Have an amazing day. See ya.